the scourge against neoliberals, the craziest economic historian, and certainly our favorite. Welcome to Splash Jojo Jack Cam, and today we're counting down our list for the top 10 Philip Murawski videos to be found on YouTube. For this list, we're mostly including large videos where Murawski either presents a seminar or speaks in an interview. His videos may be long or even just audio files along with a black screen. But to take a break from your usual podcasts, we say go ahead and stick any of these on on the background for a good informative hour. He may be biased. His critics may call him a crank, but love him, hate him, or both. He'll explain things in the world around you and may lead you to make connections between things that you would have never considered connected before. He's the hunch front of Notre Dame, Professor Philip Murawski. Number 10. Why is there a Nobel Prize in Economics? This is the odd one out in terms of additions to our list. It's an unusual one because the video is just a barely 10 minute long interview and a mainly personal one at that. But if you want a bit more casual insight into Murawski as a person, like we do, then this video is fine. In fact, the only world pertaining knowledge mentioned in this video is a couple of sentences about the origin of the Nobel Prize for Economics. We don't think a 10 minute video was required to show that the award was contrived to legitimize the Bank of Sweden. A shorter segment would have sufficed. Or that sentence I just said, the award was contrived to legitimize the Bank of Sweden. Number 9. Dictionary of Now. Markets as computer programs in a theory of markets. Also covered in the video, Hell is Truth Seen Too Late, Murawski elaborates in more detail upon a contrived theory of markets imitating nature, proposing, among other things, that markets should only involve rational numbers. Murawski reiterates the important acknowledgement of multiple markets and advocates that evolution favors simplicity. This video is low on our list because its content is too briefly covered. The theory itself is abstract and imperfect, slides are skipped, and they are horribly worded. Number 8. Where do neoliberals go after the market? A very chilled sesh. Details are minor but frequent, and the presentation is in the form of a Q&A on a black screen. A lot is indeed mentioned in this one. Technology serving as entrepreneurship training, the neoliberal thought collective projecting ideas and being a closed circle, and of course, should, as Murawski calls them, the left, make a counter-collective group, learning from how the neoliberals formed against the neoclassical economists and the natural scientists, and how the Chicago School is a crossover attempt to work both neoliberal and neoclassical theories. The value of this video depends on its viewing order. The video will have a lot of repetition if visited late, but again, it will then also serve as good content reinforcement to round off your viewing collection at the end. Number 8. Should economists be experts in markets or experts in human nature? A rather esoteric lecture, regularities come from the structure of a system, not the agency. In this video, Murawski talks in depth about a multitude of misconceptions people have when attempting to solve economic problems. The issues are not humanist issues. Certain theories are assumed infallible, demand theory for example. Efforts to counter these are also flawed because they rely on talking about human agency which the arguments from the fields of both economics and natural science have never been about. In addition, the old foundational theories and counter arguments cannot be returned to any longer. Murawski imploringly suggests that the solution to defeating these theories requires a focus on microeconomics. And then, with that context, he goes on to explaining some of the alternative theories, mainly his beloved abstract theory of markets as autonomy. This video is also high on the list because it's not down to earth. The video is about hidden mechanics and facts that he's highlighting. It's hypothesis. Moreover, he talks about using rational math, which isn't directly relatable. When he doesn't shout, the volume of this video is very low. Also, not enough neoliberalism. Custody and delivery arrangements. See, I mean, for some of you, this is just boring. Ooh, you know, this is like stuff you learn in business school or something. Yeah. This is how the world works. 
This video highlights an issue neoliberals have with academics, which some can agree with, that they may often adjudicate fallible and constructed meaning to realms of form which are essentially intangible and never immutably quantifiable. The content might indeed be worth considering once the tangible details of neoliberalism today and over the course of history are more widely known and people generally are more prepared and willing to confront it. Number 8. New Books Network Never Let a Serious Crisis Go to Waste A book plug claiming to explain how the problems contributing to the 2008 financial crisis were not amended in its aftermath. Helpfully, in this video, Murawski lists a bunch of neoliberal think tanks. The video takes a while to start properly. The video, as many others, point out the hypocrisy of the neoliberal intervention forming state institutions for the market, and how this begins the different splits of approaches within neoliberal doctrine. For example, Stigler and Freeman create a schism. People are stupid, and will be stupid. Believing this, Stigler aims to create an education for the elite, and the crisis is strengthened by the two differing sects. Murawski briefly covers the three-stage responses to political crises, and also the Bank of Sweden thing. Number 7. Fake News and Fake Experts or should the experts and the media find new citizens? Taking place after the 2016 Brexit and American presidential elections, both of which woke us up as to how effectively our internet cookies shroud and misportray our perceptions of reality. One of the most modern and up-to-date videos on our list, it's great to see Murawski applied to our current times, and it's great to see another, different, and relevant example of neoliberalism's effect upon us and our world. Further explained here is the market as the validator of truth and the opposition of experts. How we get our information and education from the market, often from dressed up, mass appealing YouTube videos conveying condensed and simplified information designed to be more palatable to a wider audience. This format often leading to misinterpretation, often missing important context or just outright promulgating lies. This format continues, all for advertising revenue's sake, and usually the educational content is all from one source. All of the panelists add to this point. Although some panelists refer to Keynes and Smith in this talk, which Murawski elsewhere has pointed out is a redundant position to maintain today, a detail he clearly notices and seems upset about. The bad thing about this video is that there's not enough Murawski, and his microphone volume is cut for the first minutes of his speaking, so hold your phone close to your ear. Number 6. Keynote for Life and Debt Conference. Some wild stuff here about geoengineering the future of climate change. The value of this video comes from the outlaying of the three-stage neoliberal handling of crises. To summate, first, in the short term, denialism of market failure, to buy time. Next, making short-term market alternatives never meant to succeed in the long run, and the planning for the actual long-term solution culminating at the end of the third stage. Other aspects of the talk claim how the roots of neoclassical economics haven't been verified, and mention of the commonly misconceived notion of neoliberalism as basically free market and Naomi Klein's notion that science is our friend to provide the evidence against the neoliberal theory. This video requires the context of introductory Murawski videos to fully understand, but that's great. Hey, tomorrow we're gonna have space mirrors! <laughs> Number five, how neoliberalism survived the financial meltdown. Though it was not my first Murawski video to view personally, this may actually succeed in being a great introductory video to the whole subject of neoliberalism from Murawski's informed position. It's very succinct, and the points covered are left open for later, more detailed videos to cover in depth. The host does a commendable job too, having clearly researched the content and his guest. Included here 
is a discussion of the differences between the often conflated neoliberals and the classical liberals and libertarians. Even though the differing groups often work together, being useful to each other, it is the neoliberals who require a strong state to enforce long-term marketization. Further impassioned discussion takes place about how think tanks translate neoliberal doctrine to be compatible and applicable for each differing national culture of the world. The neoliberals don't have a single strategy, position, or plan about issues. Every valid and different idea is discussed within a think tank and all are initiated in the aftermath of discussion simultaneously, as the host points out, to control the entire terrain of possible counter-discussion and procedure. The most important and relevant aspect of this video is neoliberalism's footprint on our contemporary culture and how it is influencing individuals' behavior, including the patrons who fund think tanks. They have all been shown the concrete ideal that self-entrepreneurship in everything is success. To the neoliberal, there is no constant society, no true self to discover, no identity, because it can all be purchased. Rather, an individual must be an entrepreneur of the self adapting themselves to the surrounding dictations of the market. Certain social media and regular media entities enforce this, encouraging such behavior as false presentation and pro-shaming. As the host hopes, the money can be channeled to correct ideologies. Number 8. Symptomatic Redness there are some great additional details here about the Mont Pelerin society, such as how the members were to all already fundamentally agree with each other in its conceptions. Other details include the disputatious name of the society and its relation to classical liberals, or perhaps lack thereof. The differences and commonalities between the multiple differing orders within the discipline of neoliberalism are also addressed, ordo liberals included. Most prevalent branches of neoliberalism agree to no government control of money, but none agree about the succeeding method in its place. Again, the three stages of neoliberal think tank strategies providing solutions for crises are elaborated upon, this time loosely applied to the market crash of 2008. And touching on Occupy, especially in contrast to neoliberal organization and coordination around a political project, he knows it's not popular, but opponents to neoliberalism need to step up their game by adopting a similar sophistication in their organization and coordination. Another solution, again acknowledged by Murawski as unpopular, is for opponents to also redefine markets and the agent. Murawski says there's a division of levels of understanding within neoliberal organizations, and this is also to take control of all forms of discussion. Number 8. Hell is truth seen too late. Murawski is among his fellow academics in this video, and in separate videos they also present lectures. There is much history and debate about the heated political spectrum in this long video. During the Cold War, certain people sought the solution to people's ineptitude through experts. George Lakoff attempted the conception of a think tank based on the outlook that the truth can stand for itself. This has not been the case. Again, Murawski condemns that the left has always been less organized and cohered than the right. Hence, Mont Pelerin not including lefties at Karl Popper's suggestion. Strongly here, Murawski reiterates how Marxism is dead by design of neoliberalism. People who are not entrepreneurs are human capital, so labor is not real. Hence, there is no value in commodities. We're not sure why the argument that people are not labor, they are capital, stands, but Murawski maintains that the neoliberal definition of markets as information processors make economic issues a different conversation. There are many references to The Trap and Zerkov in this video, along with other neoliberals, not necessarily Mont Pelerin members. Strauss, Roland Coase, and Stigler. Friedman is just an emptier frontman. There are double truth standards within neoliberal design which Murawski warns of. Information distribution and validation are controlled, then befuddlement is a strategy. The first reading of the disseminated misinformation is prescription to obey. The second secret reading is an invitation to design or ponder. The core doctrine still stands as inviolate for them. People are stupid. Don't try to improve them. Give them what they want. 
Some will stay stupid. Entrepreneurs can benefit. The internet amplifies this as well as delivers a direct profitable market mechanism. Hopefully for them, eventually, the subversion of experts, especially the discipline of science, the closest thing to empiricism which we can build our arguments and positions upon, will soon be for sale. This video includes a partially hostile Q&A about the unclear and contradictory aspects of what Murawski has been so far explaining. The presentation of this recorded talk has assorted, blocky, and occasionally vague segments. Number 4. The Global Restructuring of Science as a Marketplace of Ideas Murawski at some of his best. We find a good history lesson in this video, as Murawski presents both the Cold War era of science, to be seen as bringing rationality to an irrational world, and the modern economist story of science, both with their contradictions. No one believes the public good story anymore. Why not? Serving as a good introduction and setting of context for a later, very important video about the current state of science, Murawski overviews such new scientific research phenomena such as material transfer agreements and reach-through clauses. This is an attempt to claim the intellectual property of the other guy at the other university if he or she develops new intellectual property from using your research tool. Wow, that's new, and I mean that. That's going to be important in the talk. There are things that are new. This is not to mention the changes brought about by the globalized, neoliberal outsourcing of both manufacturing and research. This is great for dynamic Murawski delivery and close-up funny faces. Beware the annoying and constant hum in the background. Number 3. Super Speed Whilst obviously not the most powerful card in the game, it is arguably the most valuable and practical. As a defense card, its value is already heightened. But in of that category, it is superior to many of its other counterparts, allowing for a two-card draw upon defense use instead of a single replacement draw. This essentially increases your hand size, incredibly effective in a larger group game. Additionally, the card has intrinsic compatibility and combo potential. First of all, the card is an orange superpower card, a buff for Superman, Cyborg, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Fortress of Solitude, High Tech Hero, and, because of its affordable price, Titan's Tower. Not to mention that it can be collected and strategically played if you're lucky enough to have Man of Steel, Emerald Knight, Two-Face, or Cheetah. Super Speed's regular action of drawing a card and replacing itself does not only prevent its negation as a wasted defense card if not played defensively, but, if planned and timed correctly, Super Speed can be the trigger you need to set up your arranged top card stack deck combination play. And that's not to mention its double draw card ability in combination with the Flash as player. Some might say other defense cards such as Bulletproof are superior with its fetish satisfying destroy card ability. But Super Speed dominates that card by opening itself up to so much opportunity with its lower cost of 3. Affordable enough that it can be bought early game or as a side purchase without a second thought and forever relevant. But expensive enough so that it isn't the first in line to be affected by the negative effects of cards such as Parallax. Also, it's artwork. Crossing the Do Not Cross Police tape as if it were a finish line? Symbolically trampling on that institution's authority in regards to him? Such a subtle and cute chuckle to throw in there. I love it. Number 2. The Terms of Media Markets The Slow Story of Neoliberalism providing a full chronology of the cognitive theory with the coolest, most sampleable definition of neoliberalism's core tenet. Neoliberal markets are not about utility maximization or scientific equilibrium. It is a more powerful information processor than anything else known to man. I can't stress this enough. The market is smarter than you. It's smarter than everyone. There's nothing you can do about it. This was my first full Murawski video. 
and it's very good. Of course, the video goes over many semantic abstract positions and moves through them very fast. Many of the in-depth details are skipped over, but the overview is covered with enough distance that you are able to piece together a connection to the theory with your own personal experience and understanding. Plus, there is an actual example of neoliberalism's market applications addressed in the story of the US Spectrum auctions. That is only a brief synopsis as well. A key piece of information for our modern times, it makes you wonder why something so relevant wasn't covered in class. You and I live in a different world now. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I think my long attention span, patience, and high level of tolerance is actually detrimental to empathizing with a wider potential audience. This is not John Stewart Mill, folks. The Karl Popper, which you may have heard of. <sighs> Number one, the modern commercialization of science as a passel of Ponzi schemes. This is significant, though it may not be apparently so upon the first viewing. Upon returning, you will realize, and you surely will need to return in order to unpack the dense amount of information present. Not only does this video provide in-depth detail about the role of present firms and the general sinister effects of the privatization of our scientific and university research procedures, but it also directs us towards the likely results that these effects will have upon our future. This all linking together so much more. After Milton Friedman died, he had a fair amount of money. You know what he put all his money into? After he died? The privatization of state education. Not monetarism, not any of those other thousands of things. That. That is the heart of their program. And if you take nothing else away from tonight, please take this. It is the heart of the program. Knowledge must be privatized. Knowledge production must be privatized. It must also be mentioned here that Murawski is nice and crazy. It isn't hard to imagine the impression made upon a first-time listener. The biotech sector, especially if you take out Genentech and Amgen, has never made a profit. So this whole drawing in of investment and paying it out to other people is a Ponzi scheme. Do I have to explain that anymore? This video wraps up and applies the reach of neoliberalism in a very uncommonly known, yet supremely relevant context. The lecture is received mostly well. The Q&A is quite funny too, with the first question coming from what sounds to be a stereotypical left-leaning stoner in the comments too. As a video partially about how we are further encouraged to focus on the shallow delivery of content rather than the depth of the content itself, this guy clearly gets it. To wrap up about Murawski, he may be considered a highly valuable gateway into neoliberal study, especially considering the wealth of research which he has exclusively contributed to it. Coming from outside of the institution, Murawski can only see and understand so much of what the neoliberals actually believe. As such, sometimes the totality of his presentations feel messy and appear to have gaps filled in. He moves fast and unsatisfactorily remedies needed questions. For neoliberalism itself, there is arguably a lot to actually agree with. As Murawski concedes, the discipline has often proven superior to older economic doctrines. Of course, in many other areas, the theories are disgustingly irresponsible and hubristically underestimating of other social elements. 
Could a solution to its problems be to abide by some of its tenets and use the market to promulgate our truth? Are we responsible to commandeer the market and make it validate the truth we want? Is it our responsibility to abstain from buying the truth we don't want and in its stead heavily force ours down as many other throats as we can? Regardless, many of Murawski's videos, especially this one, are some of the most important videos not only for our world today, but also for our understanding of the future. The problem is, if knowledge production is be, to be privatized, and we are in a truly free market where everyone is free to choose, why stop at what's true? By the way, this is why my other talk was about climate science denialism. Why stop at what's true? Why not buy the kind of knowledge you wish everyone believed? Why not? And if you want others to believe it, even if it's false, what's to stop from purchasing this kind of flawed knowledge and disseminating it, and thus increasing the full complement of human ignorance? Do you agree with our list? Which is your favorite Philip Murawski video? For more insincere top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Splab Jab 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 Gam. In neoliberalism, income is supposed to be unevenly distributed, but if the market is an information processor, knowledge must be unequally distributed as well. Most people will be stupid. Mm -hmm.